This is a pretty typical circle geometry question. And one of the things that makes circle geometry questions difficult is the sheer amount of information that they throw at you, both verbally and also visually. I mean, when you look at this diagram, it's pretty busy. There's a lot going on. So rather than focus on all of these details and kind of get uh, lost in the trees, I'm just going to look at the question itself and what details in the question are immediately relevant to that. So they ask us to focus first on angle C, D, E. That's this guy over here. And they say that's X degrees. If you know that, show that EOD, which interestingly they have not already included in the diagram. Here it is. Angle EOD is this guy over here. Show that it equals 2X degrees. Okay, so this is what I'm required to prove. Now the X degrees, the 2X degrees, that makes me suspicious. Because the property that relates angles to each other such that one is double the other is that the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference standing on the same arc. Now, this is a really good sign for me because the angle I'm interested in, angle EOD, it is an angle at the center. So that, that's a good thing, that's a tick. But the problem is my angle at the circumference, EDC, or CDE rather, uh, it's not standing on the same arc. These guys are standing on different arcs. So angle EOD, that's standing on uh, arc DE over here, whereas the original ang angle, CDE, it's standing on this arc. Now, this is the moment where I notice, oh, the question said something which is useful to this. E is the midpoint of the arc CD, and that's why you can see these equality lines over here. So, they may stand on different arcs, but those arcs are the same in length. So, I'm going to take advantage of that fact in a second. Here's how I'm going to use that property, the one about the angles at the center. You can see that arc CE, it gives you the angle CDE. Um, here is the arc, and it produces this angle over here, CDE, and you can see it standing on the arc. It's like those two legs, but the diagram's upside down. And so the angle that's standing on that same arc, arc CE, but is at the center, is going to look like this. This is the arc I'm interested in. Yeah. So COE, this guy in here, I can actually say, using the circle properties, that that is 2x degrees. And I'll use the reason that I've just been stating. I can say that uh, unlike this guy over here, which I actually don't know about, EOD, that's what I'm trying to prove, so I'm going to delete that now. Unlike that guy, Angle COE is in fact standing on the same arc as CDE, so I'm going to say that COE is double, it's 2x, because it is double angle CDE. So my, my reasoning, I don't have the space to write it here, but my reasoning would look something like this, that angle COE is double the angle CDE, and the reason is that angles are at the center, or angle at the center, it doesn't really matter, I've just got one here. Angle at the center um, is double the angle at the circumference, standing on the same arc. That's kind of important. Uh, at the circumference, standing on the same arc. And that's why we had to go and have a look at this different angle, not the one we wanted, but it is related to the one that we wanted. So I'll leave this working here for a second, but I'm going to need to get rid of it shortly to replace it with other working. So what have I done so far? I've established that this is 2x. That's not really the angle that I wanted. I wanted to show that this guy is 2x. So what am I going to use to show that? Well, as we mentioned before, the two arcs that we're interested in, CE and uh, DE, they are both equal. That's why I highlighted these uh, equality signs here. So what I'm going to say, now I'm going to use this space, so let's just uh, make this a bit small, chuck it over here. There we go. So now I can say, well, the angle that I really want, angle EOD, that's the way they've named it in the question, I can say that it's equal to angle COE, that's the one I was just working with over here. I can say they are equal because uh, equal arcs, and those arcs are uh, CE and DE, those guys are equal, they subtend equal angles at the center. They subtend equal angles at the center. It's much more frequent that we say um, they subtend equal angles at the circumference, but these two theorems, these two properties, uh, oh, I said circumference, so I was thinking about that. I really meant center. 
Uh, these two properties are equivalent in this context, so um, they give me this, the result that I'm after. So hooray, I've got two x degrees as well, and that's part one. So tick, it's finished. Then in part two, they want us to have a look at this shape down here. OPRQ, they want us to prove that that is a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, now where is OPRQ? Well, I can see it in here, kind of nestled in the middle of the diagram. And I just want to point out, you can probably see it here right now, hopefully I've demonstrated it, that having a large diagram, uh, and also, if you want, using colors, it's so immensely helpful to be able to see what's going on and work out how the shapes within the diagram relate to each other. So... There's my shape, OPRQ, and to prove that it is indeed cyclic, what I need to do is think in two directions. Number one, if it's cyclic quadrilateral, that's what I want to prove. What I want to have in my mind is, what do I know about cyclic quadrilaterals? What properties does a cyclic quadrilateral have? Because if I want to prove that it's cyclic, I need to show that OPRQ exhibits some of the properties that a cyclic quadrilateral is supposed to have. So that's the first direction my mind is going. The second direction is to look at the question and notice, you know, for things like this, for example, EP is perpendicular to the diameter AB. Well, that's a very nice piece of information and I didn't use it at all for part one. Now, it's not a guarantee, but that does make me strongly suspicious that I could use it for part two, being that I haven't used it already. And what makes me doubly suspicious is that that EP being perpendicular to AB, it's what gives me this right angle here. Now, that right angle that's related to the OPRQ, uh, the quadrilateral I'm interested in. You can see that it is the exterior angle of that quadrilateral. And this triggers my memory. I know something about the exterior angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. I should be able to say that the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral, this guy here, I should be able to say that this is equal to the opposite interior angle. Now, where is that? Well, you can see it's up here. It's OQR. So if this is indeed cyclic, then that really should be a right angle. Now, does it look right angled? Well, yes, but of course the diagram is not enough to judge on. Is there information in the question that would lead me to think that it is right angled? And that's a better question to ask. The answer is yes. If we get rid of that, because I don't actually know that that's true yet. If you think about the triangle in which that angle lives, this guy here. I'm always looking for triangles because in between similarity and congruence, I know a lot about triangles and can prove lots of things, okay? Uh, this angle lives in triangle ODQ. Let me highlight it for you. So it's sort of this guy here, ODQ. You can see it over there. And this triangle is kind of important to me and useful because it's related to angle, or rather triangle, COQ. You see this guy over here? So these two triangles, they look mighty alike, and there's a good reason for it. If you look at the pieces that make those up, right? Uh, number one, you've got two radii here, here, and here. So they're radii, so they're equal. You've also got, uh, I should put two lines on there because we've already used one line for those arcs that we said before. Um, you've also got this guy in the middle, one, two, three, OQ. It is common to both of those triangles. So we've got two sides that are equal. And the last ingredient is something that I proved in the previous part, that you've got a 2x here and you've got a 2x here. And it's brilliant. So I've got uh, the included angle that's going to give me a triangle congruence. So I can say that triangle COQ is going to be congruent to triangle DOQ. The reason will be side, angle, side. And your sides are going to be CO and DO. That's the radii. You've also got that uh, included angle. So what did we say that was called? Um, you've got COQ being equal to DOQ, which we, prove, uh, we proved earlier. So I'd say proven above. And then our last piece, our other side, will be uh, the common side. So I'll say OQ is common. So bam, I've nailed it. These guys are congruent. If they're congruent, then all the other features of, their, of the triangles, the sides and the angles, will also be equal. So I can say, hey, you know this, um, this OQR that I'm interested in, it's corresponding to uh, CQO over here. So if angle CQO is equal to angle OQR, but 
uh, both of these together make a straight angle, 180 degrees, you can probably do the rest of the reasoning to show that it is indeed the 90 degrees we are after. So I can pop my 90 degrees in there after having proven it, and I can complete my proof by saying, well, the angle here uh, is equal to the uh, exterior angle, so the exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle, that's a property that cyclic quadrilaterals exhibit, and so, ta-da, 